For more on this, I want to bring in Brian Rudy. He's a partner at Moriyama Tashima Architects, the firm co-founded by the Science Center's architect, Raymond Moriyama, and he is joining us from Toronto. Brian, thanks so much for making time for us this afternoon. My pleasure. I, I first just want to go back to last Friday when you first heard about this sudden closure of the Science Center. What went through your mind? Well, we were surprised uh, by it, uh, by the announcement, and by the sudden closure for sure. Uh, but I guess in retrospect, we shouldn't have been surprised because we know that the maintenance on the building has been deferred uh, for a considerable amount of time. So there will be issues with the building that's over 50 years old uh, that doesn't have regular maintenance. Um, but, uh, the, you know, shutting it down seemed like a really heavy handed uh, approach. Yeah, so you've also read through this engineering report, and we were just hearing from our reporter there, that it didn't actually say that um, the entire site needed to close immediately and that even heading into the, the winter, uh, that risk of the heavy snow on the roof, um, you could have just cordoned off perhaps areas of the, the Science Centre versus shutting the whole thing down. Um, when, when you read through the report, how did you interpret it? Yeah, I mean, you, you've stated it quite well. Uh, it, it's uh, the report very specifically doesn't talk about shutting uh, the center down, but it talks about a series of incremental uh, maintenance programs, uh, some of which are more urgent than others. But as, as you stated, it's I think less than three percent of it that's in sort of more urgent condition. Um, interestingly, looking at the report, though, you can find out that. Uh, most of those panels that are in urgent condition are not above public areas or exhibition spaces. So, uh, in fact, the vast majority of the exhibits are completely unaffected by this issue. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a general maintenance issue, so there's, uh, the report is correct to say that they can cordon off certain areas and very safely uh, replace these panels over, uh, in fact, the next 10 years. Okay, so over the longer term, and 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 you've Correct. actually your your firm has has written this letter and offered your services free of charge uh, to help um, with uh, figuring out how to make this building work um, in its its current form, but well, an improved version of it, of its current form. Um, what exactly do you see that entailing? Uh, you know, what what sort of role do you think you could help with? Well, uh, it's it's a, a relatively um, simple matter to, to phase these renovations a uh, piece at a time, mm -hmm. with the report being quite detailed. Uh, so we'd be happy to help with that. This is something that, uh, you know, as far back as last April, when we knew uh, that the government wanted to move the centre to... Um, to the uh, to the Ontario Place site, um, it was something that we we felt passionately about, uh, you know, preserving this building. In fact, enhancing it, as you say, uh, it has so much potential. That building, I think, even beyond its current state, um, every Ontarian, I think, knows and loves this building uh, and has been on a bus uh, trip in high school or or what have you to 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 visit it. Um, and the experience of you know crossing the ravines and going down into the Toronto ravines. Uh, that's that's uh, something I think that is significant in people's minds and should be it's part of our cultural history, I think, as a, as a province, as a country. And, and like we mentioned, a uh, part of the history of, of your firm as well um, for people who uh, live outside of Ontario and are, are watching along with us. Um, can you tell us a bit about what you see as making the Science Center building itself uh, so unique and so, um, you know, so good at, at serving the role that it has played for these many decades now? Sure. Um, well, Raymond Moriyama is is one of Canada's seminal architects. He ju he's passed away now uh, only a few uh, years ago, um, and in fact, his wife passed away just this week, sadly. Um, but uh, he, he's well known across the country. He started his life in Canada uh, in as a Japanese Canadian, um, being interned during the war, during the Second World War, which is a very dramatic story. That uh, you know. Uh, and he was interned to these camps in, in the interior of BC. Um, and in those camps, he, he learned to kind of appreciate nature, I think, by building himself a treehouse and connecting himself directly to nature and living in this treehouse. So he talked about that story a lot. 
and I think it Im impacted the way he saw architecture. He saw architecture connecting people to uh, the land and to nature. And that was in fact the concept for this building uh, to really connect its visitors to nature. Nature is science, science is nature. So you experience it by descending down into Toronto ravines uh, and experiencing nature all around you as you, uh, as you look at science. So Brian, you, your firm wrote this letter um, and put out there that offer that you would do the work for free. Have you, have you got a response from the provincial government about this yet? No, uh, no, I've gotten a lot of calls today, but but none from uh, none from Mr. Ford. No, um, uh, unfortunately, I'm, I'm I'm still waiting. Optimistic that you'll get uh, a call, <laughs> Brian? I'm I'm not really optimistic. No, I, but I mean, I'm what I am optimistic about. I think is there's uh, so many people have reached out and expressed that they too want to contribute, uh, either money or time or a pro bono. Uh, work so I you know I'm incredibly uh, touched by that and I think uh, it speaks to me about how impactful this building has been uh, to the lives of Ontarians and to Canada in really in a, in a way. Well Brian thanks for taking our call today really appreciate your perspective on this. My pleasure thank you. That was Brian Rudy he's a partner at Moriyama Tashima Architects.